In this video, I want to share my experience for other business owners and entrepreneurs who want to work in Japan since I became a business owner in Tokyo. I hope it will be helpful for you to learn more about how to either start a company or run a business in Japan. First problem that people face when they want to start a business or work with Japanese companies is communication and a language because most people in Japan don't speak English. It's very hard to communicate with manufacturers, Japanese factories, uh, distributors, um, retailers. It's very important to have a person who gonna help you to interpret or uh, communicate with those um, factories because even if you can translate something in Japanese, it's usually a cultural problem to work uh, with those places because they never worked before and that's why they might be scared to start to communicate with a foreign company. So it's very important to establish your presence, um, not only social media, but also have a website, have a uh, form that's gonna introduce about you and your business. If you don't have a full-time staff in Japan, it's pretty much impossible to connect with um, either Japanese factories or manufacturers because like I said, they're not going to be e able to first um, speak with you or they just going to turn you down um, because they totally don't really know who you are and they, you might scare them and might um, not to establish yourself. So that's why it's very important to have a support from a vendor in Japan that's going to help you to find those manufacturers or help you to communicate with them through email or a phone call. In my case it was simple because I studied in university here and uh, my uh, business partners all speak Japanese and I can also communicate in Japanese language. Connections really help even you can speak a language uh, most of the time you need someone who can introduce you to that company and it's very crucial to have a network of people who can introduce you to, do, to those places and it really helped me to uh, kickstart my business faster because I knew people uh, who can connect me to those uh, businesses. If you want to know more information, um, visit the website, link in the description of this video. What I experienced from working with uh, Japanese companies and Japanese customers is it's very important to build a trust between uh, your product and your customers. If uh, your customers don't know anything about you, they're probably not going to purchase it. They might be spooked because you don't have any information about your product online. So what was the most important for successful project when I worked on is creating content that helps your audience, helps your potential customers to learn more about your product. You can also differentiate. It's fine to be different in Japanese market and make yourself unique as creating you are a foreign company and some even companies uh, Japanese owned companies uh, make their product that looks like it's uh, made by foreigners uh, because it's cool to have a branding from a foreign country so that's why you should actually embrace that you are a foreign owned company and you have a history so for uh, in my case um, the customers moving more to uh, digital so it's still uh, TV is still popular and people still watch TV in Japan that's why you probably need to test two things 60% put to online marketing and 40% in offline so with my experience we were organizing um, booth we were organizing events offline uh, when people were uh, joining a barbecue and we were pretty much making them uh, experience creating that unique experience that they also took a picture and shared online so you might see a lot of um, pop-up stores in Japan a lot of brands using this um, viral I would say marketing in order to reach people and it also makes you uh, look legit when you have a offline either booth uh, or pop-up store you might have an exhibition and if you have a booth people will just come to you and you present about your brand so instead of going to them they come to you so this puts you in a higher level 
when you don't chase your customers but customers chase you so that's why it's very important to put some budget not only to ads but also to test offline and then when you set up an offline place people see you and also you directly talk to those customers ask them what they like what they uh, want more from your product so that's what really worked for uh, clients that i work with uh, when we organized an event when we made an experience for customers and also they could tell us their feedback show what they like and what they might not understand about the product so that's what i would suggest for businesses not just to launch digital ads and not just test all those ads actually be present in japan uh, maybe have some people who can help you to set up that uh, booth or exhibition and test out there and also you can get a lot of content when you actually have those events take a lot of pictures uh, have video interviews talk to customers get their feedback and produce that content that you can reuse in your next campaign where you can show that you're gathering so many Japanese people and they're enjoying your product or a service so that's one of my uh, opinion not just focus only um, online but also get people's attention from offline events in the next videos I'm going to share more deeply about business and also setting up your company also getting your visas in Japan so don't forget to subscribe and watch the next video about uh, life and work in Japan see you in the next one